Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome back to Palettes a Week. And today I'm going to be talking about the fifth book in the Palettes a series slash parliamentary novels and that is The Prime Minister. Chapter 1. Ferdinand Lopez. It is certainly of service to a man to know who were his grandfathers and who were his grandmothers if he entertain an ambition to move in the upper circles of society, and also of service to be able to speak of them as persons who were themselves somebodies in their time. So, The Prime Minister is the fifth book in the Palitzer series slash parliamentary novels, and it is possibly my favourite. I think it probably is my favourite. I'm very, very fond of it, and I think it's a truly fantastic book and well worth reading all of the rest of the series to get to it, um, though the rest of the series in their own ways um, is very very good as well. I should say as well that while I would in general recommend reading the whole Barsetcher Chronicles um, before reading the Palitzer novels, there is only a minor spoiler for the Barsetcher Chronicles in um, the first four books in the series, which just spoils like one little subplot in The Small House Allington. However, the Prime Minister spoils um, the entire plot of Dr Thorne, the third book in the Barsetcher Chronicles, so I really wouldn't recommend reading The Prime Minister until you've read Dr Thorne. Um, it's only a minor thing in The Prime Minister, but it does spoil the plot of um, Dr Thorne for you, which you probably wouldn't want when you're going into reading it. So let me explain what The Prime Minister is about. In The Prime Minister, Mr Palitzer, our old favourite, becomes the Prime Minister, and um, hence the title of this book, and we follow him as Prime Minister and how he gets on with it. Mr Palitzer is a wonderful character for many reasons, but one of the reasons why I like him is because he is very serious and very genuine and very hard-working, but he's very uncharismatic and he's very truthful and honest to the extent that he won't, like, pander to anyone, which means, as Prime Minister, he really struggles to, like, always do the right thing because he just wants to be genuine and that's not necessarily how the world works especially in politics um so that aspect of the book is really really interesting and his plot line in this book both his kind of political and domestic plot line i absolutely love i don't want to say too much more about it because i don't want to spoil can you forgive her which also focuses a lot on miss Poutzer, but everything about Mr Palitzer's plotline um, and the people around him I think is fantastically done in this book and I love it um, and it's just yeah amazing I think he's such a brilliant character um, and his relationships with those around him I think is fantastically done and shows Trollope at his absolute best. We follow Mr Palitzer quite a lot in this book um, more than we have in the rest of the series since Can You Forgive Her? But we do have one other central plot line going through this book. And we're following a man called Ferdinand Lopez. Now, Ferdinand Lopez is in love with a girl called Emily Wharton. And, and Lopez really wants to marry Emily Wharton, but Emily's father is not very keen on the idea of Lopez marrying Emily Wharton because he doesn't know anything about Lopez. No one knows where Lopez has got his money from, no one knows where he's come from, he seems to have no family, he seems to have sprung from nowhere, and his business affairs seem a little bit confusing. So everyone seems to think that he has a lot of money, but no one seems to know quite where he's got it from. And in this book we follow um, Mr. Lopez and Emily Wharton, and we also follow Emily's father, Mr. Wharton, and we also follow Mr. Palitzer, and we also follow Glencora, who we met in Can You Forgive Her? And I love this book a lot. Like I said, it's my favourite in the series. There are things that I really want to talk about, how amazing they are, but I can't really talk about without slightly spoiling previous books in the series, so I'm not going to. But there are a lot of things in this book that are done brilliantly. I found it really engaging and page turnery. It's a, it's, you know, it's a pretty chunky book and I read it in a week um, and just flew through it, loving every moment. I like wept near the end at various points in this book. One of my favourite characters in this book is a young man called Arthur Fletcher who is in love with Emily Wharton, but Emily Wharton does not love back. And Anthony Trollope is very good at writing about unrequited love and the way he writes about Arthur Fletcher, just like every time Arthur Fletcher appeared I was like nearly in tears because it was so beautifully written about. Um, I also think the way that marriage is explored in this book as a theme um, and the difficulties in marriage and the kind of complexities in marriage was really really well explored. I also think the like gender power dynamic within marriage is something that's really interestingly explored in this and there's quite a lot of like husbands trying to dictate to their wives how they ought to behave and how they ought to think and the way that these different women react towards that is done really really well and it's something I think that's really really powerful in The Prime Minister. I also love Glencora in this book. She is one of she's probably my favourite character in the series like I just think she's fantastic um, and 
her dialogue and the way she talks to everyone around her and her sarcasm and irony like I just absolutely love it she's such a brilliant character there is so much that I love about the Prime Minister like I said I think it's probably my favorite in the series um, and I just think it's fantastic it's a really a brilliant book Anthony Trollope at his absolute best exploring marriage and money and class and parliament and reform um, and I think as well this is the most interesting book politically like obviously politics is a huge theme throughout the whole Palitzer series and the parliamentary novels you know the other name is the parliamentary novels and I think that name actually suits the series better because Mr Palitzer is not a major character in every book but the way this book looks at politics and Mr Palitzer's like philosophy of politics is so fantastic and so interesting and he is such an interesting man and to watch him like as a statesman is so good and there's a chapter in this towards the end where he's explaining to someone else his like views on politics and what he thinks a conservative is and what he thinks a liberal is him being a member of the liberal party and like why he is a liberal is just like it's really really powerful and really emotive um, and I just think it's really fantastic um, and the way it looks at like political ideology it's the book in the series I think which for me most complexly looks at politics and political ideology and like why people might go into office and the fact that like so many people in parliament just like want power and Mr Palace is like no I just want to do a good job and I love him for that and it's it's fantastic so yeah this is a brilliant book I would highly recommend it like I would all of the series but this one is my special favorite so yeah I don't have much else to say I think on this one please let me know down in the comments if you've read The Prime Minister and what you thought of it and I'll be back tomorrow to talk about the final book in the series.